Today we're going to be looking at automating heating system and more specifically a white plan. Now, this is going to be still applicable for S plan, S plan pluses in a lot of different ways. So stay tuned and keep on watching. But we're going to be breaking down the problems into three different sections. We're going to be looking at why are we doing it? What are the problems associated with the system? What are we going to be replacing and what are the devices associated with it? And how exactly are we going to do it in terms of commissioning, programming and so on? So let's get into it. Now, the first thing that I would like to address is why, what is the actual problem with the system and why do we want to automate it? Well, the first one is going to be for me, the thermostat itself. Um, obviously, there's a thermostat maybe in one or two places in the house. Most likely, it's going to be one in the living room or the hallway because it's the coldest place or kind of the most used space in the house. Now, that is not necessarily great because you can currently be sitting in your bedroom and you can be overheating because the living room is still calling for heat. However, your bedroom has met demand a very, very long time ago. The only option that you really have is to go and manually adjust the TRV or go downstairs and actually switch off the heating or just reduce the thermostat. Not ideal and it's going to be much better if we actually have a thermostat per room or if we do at least have a couple of thermostats in key locations of the house so we can take a better average of what is actually going on. The next one in line is going to be the programmer uh, after the thermostat. So with the programmer, there's a couple of different issues. The first one is going to be the fact that uh, they're not super easy to set. Yes, there's only a couple of buttons and there's a menu and it explains how to do it and so on. But it usually takes a long period of time and most people actually never touch them. They're already preset by whoever installed it. Let's say Monday to Friday, you have some kind of a schedule and that's it. And what ends up happening most of the time is you have these buttons where you can manually switch on the heating, switch on the hot water. So people just go and press it, use it for a while, then go and manually switch it off. So it's far away from actually being useful. Most of the time it's more of a hindrance to the whole system. Now, that's probably one of the first things for us to replace and especially in the retrofit installation, but we're going to look at that a little bit later. Next thing in line is gonna be the cylinder. Now, uh, cylinder thermostat. So when it comes to this one, not that big of a deal because honestly once you find your perfect temperature it doesn't really matter you can set it to 50 degrees and you can pretty much leave it there and it's going to do its best job to get up to that temperature whenever it can but it's going to be nice to be able to adjust it every now and again or maybe boost it a little bit or especially if you have solar and you want to dump a little bit of excess in there it might not be the worst idea in the world then we have the valves and the valves are pretty much related to point one and two uh, again manual adjustment most of the time you're either not going to touch it at all or you're going to go and set it to two and a half three maybe because you're trying to lower the temperature in the room then next time around it's going to get a little bit too cold so you're going to whack it again on five and that's pretty much all the control that you get you don't have manual adjustments and gradual adjustment and i think most people correct me if i'm wrong are not necessarily going to bother going to valve and constantly adjusting it up and down so ideally we can either completely remove it out of the equation possible or we, we can replace it with a uh, automatic valve that is going to keep on adjusting based on the room temperature in every single space and that is also exactly what is going to give you the nice control where your bedroom your living room your bathroom and so on are going to be at a different temperature set point set exactly where you want them because maybe whenever you're sleeping in your bedroom you want it to be a little bit colder in comparison to your living room or maybe early in the morning you like to have your bathroom boiling hot absolutely fine you can adjust that with obviously automatic trvs and then the final one and probably going to be the biggest one is going to be well me and you um and why do i say that is because the human element is related to point one two and three and so on and everything now one of the biggest things that happens is uh, because the programmers and the manual controls and so on are not so easy to adjust and also you can't necessarily adjust them from anywhere in the world um you go on a holiday you forget everything on and then for two or three weeks or however long we were gone the heating system is up and running at 100 percent all the time so you come back and your heating bills actually haven't changed even though you were not in the house actively using it the things that do happen is obviously you forget to switch it on so you go back home and you can't take a shower because now you have to wait for an hour for the hot water to get up to temperature and so on and so on the human element is probably going to be the worst part of the whole thing the next thing that we're going to be looking at is the what and what exactly the system is, how does it work and how does it function conventionally and how are we going to actually change it, what devices do we need to use in place. Behind me you can see my current white plant heating system and pretty much all the elements involved in it. You have your hot water cylinder, your radiators and so on. But let's actually get a deeper dive and see how exactly it works. So basically the idea with the white plant is, well you can see it in here nicely in a Y. 
uh, you have a mid position valve and then that mid position valve can either go into hot water heating or it can go to both directions at the same time and basically that mid position valve is what decides again what to prioritize and what is currently being switched on so for example if you only want hot water maybe it's summer and you don't require any heating that's fine it can move to that hot water position or it can stay in that hot water position i'll show you that in a second and it will only circulate hot water around that circuit that loop what actually happens at the back end is you're going to have your programmer again that's going to be telling you when you actually want it so if you already have some schedule set for i don't know 4 a.m in the morning to 6 a.m so you can have a shower in the morning uh, then the programmer says hey i demand hot water right now if the cylinder stat is not satisfied is going to then go into that well hot water position it's going to start a pump it's going to start the hot water and the boiler and so on and you're going to get obviously hot water to that space pretty much quite the opposite when it comes to heating again it can go into heating only position let's say your hot water is already satisfied then you can only circulate hot water around the radiators tower rails and so on everything in the house that way now that is pretty much exactly the same logic with one small difference rather than using the cylinder stat we're using the room thermostat to decide whether or not we currently demand heating whether or not the temperature is under whatever we set it on the uh thermostat itself and then it does basically exactly the same thing what do we actually need to replace that whole system and what is actually already in place in mind what you can see next to me is going to be the programmer or the back of the programmer hence how it's currently set um only two relays is everything that you require in here to retrofit it you're not going to get the full functionality however you'll be able to set up schedules from pretty much anywhere in the world you'll be able to override it change it and do pretty much anything you want on the go and then you can also start doing some more advanced logics in terms of if it's cold outside and so on you can put some weather api information and you can do a little bit of weather compensation only with logic and nothing else this is super easy to achieve you don't actually need a lot you're going to require any device that can use two relays. For example, I do have a Nano IO on me and that basically has two relays and six inputs on the other side. Something like that can go in place and it can quite easily replace basically all the logic, everything that the programmer is using. And basically you have these two wires that are being switched on and they say uh, whether or not you require heating, hot water or you require both at the same time. Now, if we do want to make it a little bit better, it's not going to be a problem if you do have the opportunity to wire everything up we need to start thinking about the mid position valve because the mid position valve in this case is going to be the pivoting uh, part of the system this is what actually decides whether or not you need heating hot water or both and uh, with this one you can see i've made a little diagram or ChatGPT made a little diagram uh, to show you the logic behind it but basically again you just have two relays in here and then you're deciding depending on the combination of on and off uh, whether or not you want hot water heating or both at the same time if you actually want to control the whole system uh, what you can do is you can replace pretty much every single element now i've not added everything in here but if you focus on the top you have your room thermostat cylinder stats and so on room thermostats you can get again pretty much any wireless uh, temperature sensor on the market or you can do something uh, hardwired if the property allows it you can change the cylinder stats, although that's probably going to be the one element that can just become an input. So whenever the cylinder stat is satisfied, you can get that information back into your system. You can change the radiator valves with wireless ones uh, or even hardwired ones, just ele electronic valves. The mid position valve is again just two relays to say which position is currently going into. Immersion element, yes, you need another relay in place. Um, the pump, maybe you need another relay or you can switch it on from the auxiliary switch of the mid position valve directly or two port valve if you have an S plan. And then for the boiler or the heating source, usually you just have one relay or one trigger, volt free contact or 230 volt that is going to call the boiler to actually switch on. Right, now we get to the geeky part. How do we actually do it? So I'm going to be showing you in locks and config um, what devices we need, what connections we need and so on. And we're going to play out two different scenarios. I'm going to start with the easy one. The easy one is just a retrofit applications where we use two relays and we replace the programmer. And then we're going to go into a fully wired solution where we have control over pretty much every single element. We have visualization and a lot more in our system. So the first thing that I've done is the very, very simple scenario that I was talking about earlier. I am again using that Nano IO. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm replacing the 
current controller, which is the programmer, and I'm putting a nano iron in place to be able to send a call for heat and call for hot water. When it comes to this, it's very, very simple and very straightforward. There's not much for us to uh, get wrong, and there's definitely a little bit more that we can do with the entire system. But for now, a very simple example, as you can see, there's a heating schedule that you can open up, you can adjust, you can set different days and so on. There is a hot water schedule, which is again can be individual and you can change it again from the app or from here directly. And I've also added a holiday mode switch. So whenever you go away, rather than you creating a new schedule or changing your existing schedules and so on, within your current ones, you're already gonna have holiday as an option. And the only thing that I've really done is maybe throw away on holiday. I'm only gonna be switching on the hot water for maybe about an hour or two in the early hours of the morning, just so the system can circulate a little bit of hot water around and maybe there's not gonna be uh, any Legionella in the tank if you have an open tank and so on. And how does that look in the app? If I go to the retrofit house that I've created in here, that's pretty much it. If you're on holiday, click on the holiday and you'll see that the two schedules are immediately disabled. That's it, so you don't have to set them up every single time. If I switch it off, they get enabled back again. Then you can also see in the back end, if I come in here, relays on, relays on, basically it's following the schedule. Now that means that you're still leaving the majority of the logic to be uh, on the hardware side, which means you're giving it a command or you're giving it a demand signal to say, hey, I want hot, uh, hot water or I want heating. However, the uh, cylinder stat or the current room thermostat decides whether or not that is actually gonna be the case and then sends it to the next thing in line and so on. Right. Now let's look at the more interesting case, which is going to be the cool heating automation. And now in here is where it gets a little bit more interesting. So what I've done is I've created two different rooms. Uh, I've created a living room and a bedroom. However, in a bigger property, obviously you're going to have every single room. Every single one is probably going to have a thermostat. It's going to have a TRV that's going to be controlling it and so on. So in these rooms, now we can start doing something a little bit more advanced. For example, the intelligent room controllers are going to be um, learning over time. They're going to be uh, kind of preempting the schedule. So for example, if your schedule starts at 8 a.m. in the morning, it's going to start maybe at five or six and so on, however long it needs to actually get to your target temperature. So you don't have to pre-adjust it for that to happen. Um, then if you have any additional door and window contacts, you can get it to stop the heating demand for that zone. So let's say you open the window for the bedroom or you open the window for the living room and you don't want to be wasting heating energy. Simple, you just connect the door window contact and then you can stop that heating demand. Same thing with things like presence sensors and so on. You can automate it even further with adding just a presence sensor in there. I can say, hey, my heating schedule is supposed to end at 10 p.m. However, I'm still in that room, so keep on extending that time period and so on. Then if you go and look up here, you can see there's outdoor temperature. So the logic blocks and the functionality and so on is already gonna be doing some weather compensation in the back end to say if it's quarter outside, start the system a little bit earlier and so on and so forth. There's a lot of logic happening in here and I'll definitely advise you guys to click on the more information, read through what exactly is happening and so on. But all we need to know is that this decides the room temperature and it decides whether or not the valve needs to open. If it says, hey, you're supposed to open, that sends command to the heating and cooling controller, which is our boiler in this case, and then the heating demand turns on. We've then created se separate logic when it comes to our hot water. And for the hot water, again, you can use the cylinder stat as an input and you can say whether or not it's satisfied, but I do prefer to put a temperature sensor in there so I can actually read the information and see exactly what my cylinder is saying. As you can see at the moment, it's 37 degrees. And I also like to put a little slider in there so you can decide uh, what should your hot water temperature be. Most of the time, we're not going to adjust it, but it's nice to have in here. And basically what I'm saying is if the schedule is running and I'm under temperature with a couple of degrees word of a difference or word of a delta, start the hot water demand. Then all the additional logic in here is really for the mid position valve. Now I've not done it in the leanest way possible, if that makes sense. Uh, I've put everything on the page so you can actually see it. But essentially what uh, the whole logic is, is if this and that is true, or if this or that is true, do X. There's only really two cables that we need to worry about when it comes to the mid position valve in our case. You have the gray and the white, and then 
I've put the combinations in here. A different combination of on and off gives you different outputs. So for example, if you only want hot water, you can see that the grade is off and the white is off. So the default position is basically hot water only. Uh, then if you want heating only, white is on and gray is on. And then the one in between is basically just the white on and so on. That's all this logic is really doing. And it's telling the boiler when to fire up, what position the mid position valve is supposed to go to. And that's pretty much it. Now this is really just kind of scratching the surface in terms of what you can do. But if you look down here, I'm also putting some ideas that you might potentially use. For example, an automatic boost. If you do have an immersion, great. You can just put kind of a button in the app and then that button can act as uh, your boost control, maybe for half an hour, an hour, two hours and so on. But you can also create some automatic boost. Let's say that the current delta uh, so the difference between your target temperature and your current temperature is way too high. Not a problem. We can create some logic to say, right, as long as it's more than 20, uh, 15 degrees apart and so on, switch on the boost up until it goes to a smaller delta. And then that is exactly what we're doing in here. Basically a 25 degrees worth of a difference, switch on. Whenever it gets to a 15 degrees difference, switch off and then let the um, boiler to obviously do the job we can start looking into even more configurations because now we have control over every single device. Basically from this point on, we can decide whether or not if we have solar to use it and divert a little bit of energy whenever we're exporting to the grid. We can uh, do a little bit more weather compensation. We can do a little bit more advanced uh, Legionella if we need to, but because we have control over every single element from here on, it's only gonna be a logic uh, and that's pretty much it. How does that look in the app? is what you might ask well in the app here's my new build heating and you can see i have all the temperature sensors uh in here i'm just simulating them obviously but you can see there's a hot water boost as well which i can trigger and then my intelligent room controllers they're going to be in the corresponding rooms so for example if i go to the room I have my target temperature in here and i have my current schedule that's running. It already does a lot of things like automatically switching on valves uh, every 14 days and so on. All of that is happening in the background without me really moving a finger. And that is at the end of the day, the goal of the system. We try to remove the human element as much as we can. And you want to make it more efficient. You want to make it more comfortable and you want to make sure that there's always the right temperature at the right time. I will leave you with all of that information. I can definitely do a deeper dive into the logics and so on. Just let me know if you'd like to see it and exactly what kind of system is gonna be more popular for your projects. I'll be happy to uh, dive much, much deeper and then speak about the details and so on. But that is a general overview and then you can probably find information about a lot of the function blocks and so on uh, online already. Thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions leave them down in the comments and i'll see you next time bye